Welcome back to Solar Ed Ice to EV channel. Hey boys and girls, welcome here to um, Cyber Truck Heaven, I guess would be the best way to put it. Sandy Monroe Fireside Chat with Tesla, top five manufacturing executives, Tesla's manufacturing executive team from left to right. Hi everyone, I'm Lars Morari, the head of vehicle engineering. I do most of the standard car parts on this Cyber Truck. I am Franz von Holzhausen, head of design Cyber Truck. I crashed a steel ball into a window and make these guys' lives very hard. I am Drew Baglino. I leave the powertrain and energy at Tesla, so the batteries driving into the power electronics in the truck are my effort. Hi, my name is Pete Bannon. I leave the low-voltage electronics and the autopilot hardware team, so my team designed, although we're voltage controllers and the cameras and displays, I am David Lau of the vehicle software team. I work with pretty much all of these guys and help them bring all their great hardware to life with software. Fireside Chat 1. 48-Volt Vehicle Electrical Architecture Tesla pursued the case for 48-Volt Vehicle Electrical Architecture. It's unlikely to see 48-Volt in the Model S or X, but the next-generation vehicle would likely have the 48-Volt Electrical Architecture for Tesla. The Cybertruck became a good testbed for many things that ended up seeing for Tesla's forward products. So, of course, the 48-Volt Architecture helps reduce wiring. We've talked about that several times. Not switching from CAN bus to an Ethernet or an Ethernet loop connection. Based on the 12-volt architecture, this approach fundamentally changed the vehicle's design. Tesla vehicle executives talked about the connector endpoints on the Model 3 being 273 connections and on the Cybertruck, which was 35% more than 368. The current Model 3 consists of 490 cross-car wires, and on the Cybertruck, there were only 155, so a 68% reduction. Mass declined of 84% in material and weight with the new high-powered wire harness. Switch over from CAN bus to Ethernet essentially gave them more robust control over the vehicle from a debugability standpoint. Now they can pull out a laptop and make one connection, which tells them about every single point of the car versus before with multiple CAN buses. So finding and fixing issues and pushing down system updates is a little easier. Fireside Chat 2, Giga Casting. They discuss the castings, Lars mentioned the 9,000-ton press used for the rear casting. But the front casting works on a 6,500-ton press, the same press as the Model Y, so it sounded like they have two 9,000-ton presses for the Cybertruck rear castings and one dedicated for the front casting. But of course, they could also utilize the casting machine Model 3 and Y. They mentioned that the 2.6 seconds here to 60 on the Cyberbeast version is traction limited. It sounded like it could do a little bit better with stickier tires. Fireside Chat 3. The Electrical Motor Architecture and Charging Tesla vehicle executives said rare earth metals are still in the motor for the next generation of vehicles. Remember, they said that they're going to remove those. It might be a performance need thing here, but they said there are no more rare earth metals in this motor than in the Model 3. Tesla vehicle executives commented on vehicle charging and how they physically structured the battery to accept 400 or 800 volts. This largely depends on which supercharger is being used. We've touched on that, though Drew also mentioned Volkswagen being the last to adopt the 400-volt North American charging standards. Fireside Chat 4 Cybertruck Range They talked briefly about the range extender, just sharing their general thought that 300-plus miles is sufficient for most people. So why waste the batteries if not everybody needs them? If you do, you can get the range extender. Logically, it does make sense, but in the ideal case, it would be preferable from a consumer standpoint to pick which range you wanted without compromising sacrificing that space. But of course, if it's the range extender or nothing, I'm glad Tesla is offering it. And for towing, they said the Cybertruck will sense the additional weight and step up the regenerative braking. Fireside Chat 54680 Batteries Accordingly, specific to the cell, Drew did say that these are the next-generation Cybercell 4680 batteries, so 9% more energy density than the previous versions. Drew said implementing a structural battery pack is a 3.0 or B grade on a 4.0 scale. In contrast, previously on a Tesla earnings call, he described the Model Y structural pack at the time as a C grade implementation of the future vision for that architecture. So there are some improvements on that, but Drew still feels like they have more progress to make. So those were my main takeaways. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.